number four. Okay, so now let's look at a little trick using working planes. Here's a scenario where we need to set some solar panels on the roof of this hotel. So first we'll go to the 3D modeling tool set and choose set working plane. And then we'll go to the new mode of that tool such that the working plane will snap to a selected face. Okay, so next we'll go and uh, choose the array of solar panels and then select the Align Plane command. This will provide us with the ability to define the plane of the solar panels and, as if by magic, they will align themselves with the roof of the building. Okay, perfect. Now, hey, there's a real time saver. Number three. Okay, here we're going to add a custom handrail to a stair. So we'll begin by extracting the segments that make up the handrail path. These are created when you create the stair and are either line segments or 3D polys. Either way, the idea is to pick all of them so they can be grouped. And then using the Compose command, we'll proceed and create a single NURBS curve. And as you can see, Luis is doing just that. Okay, so now what we're going to do is enter the group and we'll change the view and position the elements that represent the profile of the handrail. Okay, this can be any closed polygon or polyline. And then selecting the extrude along path command will complete the handrail. And upon exiting the group, we'll see that we now have a custom profile for the handrail on our new stair. And here's a zoomed in view of what it looks like. Hey, that's pretty cool. All right, let's move on to the next one. Number two. Okay, now let's look at some tricks using constraints. Uh, the plan of this park was part of the Marina project for the 2010 rollout and featured many of the new attributes available in the new release. However, to develop this plan, we used a couple of tricks that were just plain old pretty cool and really helped us in the design process. First, using the new dimensioning tool, you can see that we can now move the dimensioning text anywhere. This will provide you with the complete flexibility when laying out dimensioning text. And then next, you can see how we can get the dimension to drive the geometry. To me, this is huge. But also notice how we can freely move the grouped circles and the lines that radiate from them stay connected. This is possible due to constraints placed on these lines and in particular constrained coincident. Okay, so there's something you can try next time you're working on a schematic design. Okay, next. Number one. Okay, this is probably our number one pick. So, in this segment, we're going to talk about a couple of tips using both Unified View and the Layer Plane. To get going, we'll import this PDF using our drag-and-drop technology. And as you can see, since this is a vector-based PDF, we can snap to pieces of the geometry like endpoints or corner points. So, next we'll check the scale of the drawing. Okay, and yep, it'll need to be rescaled. Fortunately, scale by distance will accomplish this nicely. So let's uh, input the real distance and voila, the drawing is now at scale. Okay, so now we'll go on with the business of ungrouping the PDF. So we'll ungroup the PDF and while we're doing that we'll toss the bitmap image away since we won't really need that information for this exercise leaving us with just the vector based data. Alright, here's where the fun begins. In the object info palette, we'll set the plane description to layer plane. And now we're able to take our 2D lines into a 3D view. And now the trick here is that we can start to extrude some of this 2D information into 3D space. By choosing the polygonal outline of these buildings, we can use the extrude command, giving the building some height. So I'll work around the site and in the end have some 3D information I can show to the client. 
Or maybe I can do a sun study to see how the building will affect some of the entourage. Perfect. Honorable mention. So here's another trick using the DCM or Dimensional Constraints Manager. You've probably seen how you can get the dimension to drive the geometry. If you look at this plan quickly before Luis changes the view, you'll see some dimensions in green. Those, of course, are the constraints we've placed on those walls, and they'll help us perform some of the magic. Also notice that the dimensions are constrained at their ends. So now, using the magic wand to select them, we'll place the dimension on the layer plane, and then switch to a 3D view. Here again, what's cool is that although you can't see the actual 3D text, if you click on the dimension string, you'll be able to get the dimension you type in to drive the geometry. And the same ability to pin the end of the dimension with the blue dots applies. So yeah, I think that's pretty cool. Second honorable mention. And now we'll look at the Select Similar tool, or what we affectionately call the magic wand. So let's see how we can make this thing useful. First we'll go to its preferences and set it up to select object by type. And you can see we can go around and select all the doors. Or maybe all the walls. Okay, that's good, but let's refine the selection criteria a bit. So back to the preferences and we'll choose by size. Now we've got something going. We can select all of the double doors of the specified size or maybe all of those 2-6 doors that we'll need to have replaced with 3-0 doors. And lastly, maybe we need all of the 2-0 bathroom doors. Third, honorable mention. All right, for this tip we're going to place a window in a battered wall segment. So what we'll start with is this bit of uh, a, a model, and we'll go to a plan view and create the section of battered wall. I'll use the extrude along path command to do this by simply drawing a line that represents the path and I'll use the polygon as the profile. This isn't necessarily new to 2010 yet, so bear with me as we set the extruded segment in the correct orientation by editing the profile and then we'll return to the 3D view. I just need to rotate the uh, section of polygon here uh, 180 degrees and then we'll be done with this little bit of setup. Okay. I'll render the view in OpenGL so you can see a bit more clearly and I'll use the create wall projection command from the AEC pull down. This will create the battered wall segment for us in the model and we can look at it from a couple of different angles in 3D. Okay, perfect. And now finally, I'll place a couple of windows in the battered wall. And what you'll first see is that they're a little too low because the default value for the elevation for the window was set at 6.8. Well, no problem. I can easily correct that in the object info palette by entering a larger value for the elevation of the windows. And yes, they fit nicely in the wall. And now I'll go back into the Object Info palette and enter a value of, oh, let's say maybe 8 inches into the plan wall offset. And this will drive the windows a little forward in the wall. And now we can have a look at the completed task in 3D. Okay, so that's it for our top 10 tips and tricks and a couple of honorable mentions here in Vectorworks Architect 2010. I hope you had as much fun watching us work through these tips as we had making them. So now let's move into the question and answer session. If you type a question into the chat function there in the uh, GoToMeeting panel, we'll get it answered for you as quickly as we can.